Mjalnar had been broken, the frost blade failing to pierce the hide of Angronius of Nuceria, and Lehman Russ is flung backwards by a swipe of noxious claws. Elavagar is fractured by the blow, and the artificer armor fails this Primarch. It had survived the Horus heresy, but it did not survive this. If not for luck, the Lord of Wolves would have died. Did you not learn from Krakenmaw? The Red Angel snorts and brushes away the shards of the Frostblade that had embedded themselves in his carapace. This weakness is because of your mortality. Accept the ruinous powers, if you mean to win. Angron growls in displeasure. Swear fealty and become death. Imagine it, war everlasting. There was no death in the warp, for all things beholden to it. They had become immortal. There was eternity in service, but who would ever want that? War everlasting? Lehman Russ already knew what that was like. No, I have had my fill of war everlasting. Ten thousand years of tragedy that befell their empire. I refuse, Angron. The Imperium of Man made to be a mockery of what it had represented. Only the highborn, those despicable nobles, had managed to reap a bounty from it. On every Imperial world, they grew in influence and affluence and the citizens of the Empire were treated as nothing more than their slaves. They call themselves the finest, but they were the worst. The Emperor would have seen to their punishment personally. Lehman Russ knew that much. How I abhorred a tyrant, but I had turned that ire towards the clergy instead. I had become a tyrant myself. Only those rogue traders, who I had granted a warrant of trade, stood against the horrors of what my empire had become. The Star Child would meet the dragon, and that corpse on a throne. What I had become, Uriah Olathair, if only I had heeded your warning. I was wrong, but my arrogance had turned my vision towards war. Sanguinius had wisdom I did not. The people had to be free. There was no world in which my proposal would have worked. I could not starve those lurking in the warp. The Immaterium would last, and what it would become? It rested entirely in the hands of those who lived in this galaxy. It had been known as the Abyss, but after I routed every demon lord as the hero of many faces, and cleansed it of that corruption, it had become malleable, permeable in ways unknown to many all save for those privy to the matters of the phlogiston, and hailing from planes alien to this one. The people had become the master of it. Their feelings, their thoughts, their imaginations, and their dreams. They would paint that canvas. Otherwise, I would have to sterilize everything that made mortals worthy of life to begin with. They would become like any macabre servitor, those slaves stripped of their identity and malformed into drones. I would have to abolish it. That practice was unseemly and definitely absent of any morality. The rot in my empire was everywhere. I had a lot of work to do if I was to rebuild it from the ashes. I had to pray. I grew to loathe it in this life, but I had to do it. If only for the sake of my legacy that spark of divinity had fled. It had gone with death, and the life that Guts Vorlesh had lived as the White Wolf. Only my own blood could be found in his veins. Fenrir had gone silent, but there was something else. There was a fire, a light in the darkness. This was a son waiting to be born. It was a grievous miracle. Then join our brothers, Lehman Russ. Angronius of Nuceria plunges Vurath into the heart of the wolf. The Black Blade would greedily devour this soul. Join them in death. There was a memory. Garnets he could never forget. Those eyes belonging to a woman he loved. Her amethyst hands wrapping around him. And there was an undeniable warmth. The drow had been a paladin. 
just like his Casca, but unlike her, there was a brutality in Minthara Benre. There was ruthlessness. The dark elf had her flaws, but he saw in her what he had lost. The wolf knew that it was inevitable. When you are immortal, the patterns become obvious. Reincarnation was always predominant in these realms, and it could be seen everywhere. Casca sought him out, and she had found her guts. In turn, guts had found her. The Lord of Wolves about to die at the hands of his own brother, and all he can do is reminisce. I didn't take you for a sentimental fool. Minthara scolds him in the way that only she can. I did not marry Driss de Urden. I married the White Wolf. The drow forces the wolf to rise from his grave. In Menzo Baranzan, blood feuds were as frequent as in the Imperium of Man. The answer was always the same. Dragonslayer almost seems to materialize in her hands. They can only be solved with violence, and in this case, a disproportionate amount of violence. The drow shoves the great sword into his hands. Guts, Vorlesh, of House Vorlesh. This is not a request from your wife, but an order from Minthara Benre. I want to see Angronius of Nuceria dead at your feet. Honor our house with his life and bring me his head as a trophy. I must apologize, Angron. Lehman Russ had stopped the blade. It was caught in his hand, having pierced his sternum but failing to skewer his heart, and when he gripped Vurath with all of his strength, it began to crack. Angron tried to free it, but this was not the Lehman Russ that he had known. It did not budge, and the grip could not be broken. I'm not allowed to lose. There is a savagery. This desire for victory was unheard of in the Primarch. The wolf was roused from his slumber, and he was on the hunt. The wife is watching. What manner of power is this? The demon prince only had a moment to indulge in confusion, and that is when a fist dug itself into his face. Angronius of Nuceria is hurled backwards into Yggdrasil. The Tree of Life was the size of any hive world, but it shook regardless of that fact on impact. The branches began to fall, and the trunk had splintered. Vurath had been broken, the black blade reduced to nothing but dust. Have you swallowed your pride at last, and accepted one of them as your master? No, Angron. This is the grievous miracle. Lehman Russ had to relish this. It is mortality unfiltered, that which is the bane of those high above and deep below. The words had been etched into his soul. Calum Vorlesh had become an echo in his nephew. The strike had untangled this plane from the taint of the warp and banished those demiurges. This was no place for monsters and those Valkyries who had sacrificed their lives to protect Grunbeld. Their souls had been set free, and they would return to my side in the Astronomicon. They would be celebrated in a Valhalla of my own craftsmanship. No harm would come to them, and their reward would be a place by the side of the God-Emperor of mankind. What nonsense is this? The warp has already made you take leave of your senses. I never had any to begin with. Lehman Russ grabs the betrayer by the throat, this coward who spurned his own flesh and blood. There is nothing to take, but I do have something I can share with your masters. The grievous miracle began to coalesce. It had searched for something familiar, anything that spoke to this Lehman Russ and what he symbolized. It is this pain. It was always the wind that which would fan the flames, this coaxing of the fire. The storm of vengeance is evoked, and they are both caught in the tempest. That gale had become a tornado. The wind would never harm Lehman Russ, but the same could not be said for his sibling. The Lord of the Red Sands screams in agony. This was a pain he had never known, and not even the immortality granted to him by those ruinous powers could protect his soul. The Red Angel would not return to them, 
and his fate was to be the same as Horus Lupercal. Oblivion. Yggdrasil is disintegrated by the spell, and Dragon Slayer is able to escape those roots, the great sword falling back into the hands of Lehman Russ. How I have missed this, Grunveld could only whisper. Welcome home, Guts. The White Wolf had returned. 